One of those things that people often ask is, if the moon is supposed to be dead and inactive, why does it have light and dark patches on the surface? Surely it should be generally all of the same kind of colour. Now, the dark patches on the surface are known as lunar maria, or seas, since early people thought, looking up at the moon, they were in fact seas and oceans on there. The dark areas are actually related to volcanic activity, though the moon is actually no longer volcanically active, one stage did have a very active core and plenty of volcanoes. However, since the moon is actually significantly smaller than the Earth, the outer layers of the moon cooled quicker than the Earth, it's been about a billion years since any volcanoes burst through the crust. It does, however, have a hot core, but it's tiny in comparison to the Earth's, and a small molten core can't force magma up to the surface anymore. The hot central core is probably maintained by the Moon's orbit around the Earth, and the tidal forces on the Moon cause it to be periodically squeezed and relaxed, which heats up the core. When the core actually was active in causing volcanoes to break through the surface, the rock that actually was formed as a result was basalt, which is obviously formed in the earth as well. Basaltic rocks are formed when the lava cools rapidly. It's very fine-grained and it's black when it's first formed, and then it turns a more brownish colour as it weathers and deteriorates. The basalt on the moon differs somewhat from the ones on the earth, and it actually has a higher uh, proportion of iron, and titanium in it. This may give some clues as to inner structure actually of the moon. It leaves us with the question, why isn't the moon the same uniform colour? Well, there's something called the late heavy bombardment. About four billion years ago, the moon was hit multiple times by large objects and these left substantial impact craters on the surface of the moon. Many of these are actually still uh, on view today, especially in the lighter areas of the moon. This gives us some clue about what might have actually happened. Now, the light coloured rock on the moon is generally of a type of rock called anthocyte, which is nearly all felspar, which is rock found in large amounts on the Earth's crust. Now, during the late heavy bombardment, this rock is likely to be in the predominant rock on the surface of the moon. In about 4 billion years ago, the moon was much brighter than it is now. After the bombardment, however, the moon wasn't a smooth surface. Instead, along with thousands of small craters on the surface, there are enormous dents and elevations on the surface. Even today, the surface changes by about 10 kilometres across the surface of the Moon. However, even with the bombardment coming to an end, the activity on the Moon didn't end. It continued in the form of volcanic action from the Moon's still hot core. Like on Earth, once the lava from this volcanic activity breaks through the crust, then flows downhill and pools around the base of the volcanoes until it cools, forming the basaltic rocks. The areas of the moon with the largest amount of basaltic rocks are also those that are the lowest lying regions, so it's likely that those areas were filled with lakes of cooling lava, flowing down in streams from the active volcanoes. This filling of those lower lying regions also goes to show why the darker areas of the moon also have the fewest visible impact craters. The lunar maria has covered over the impact craters of the late heavy bombardment with a thick skin of volcanic lava, leaving just the higher areas to show how violent the late heavy bombardment was for the more vulnerable moon as a target. So there we have the moon and an explanation for the light and dark regions, at least a possible one.